Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Edward Orton and uh, I'm going to be teaching this class this term, so GGS 300 Quantitative Methods for Geographical Analysis. I just wanted to take this opportunity to introduce myself, um, but also just to, to let you know that although we obviously find ourselves in uh, far from ideal circumstances, um, I will do my utmost this term within this module to ensure that uh, you will find uh, that the content stimulating and exciting, uh, but also that this is a really key part of your personal and professional development while at GMU, um, because it's just going to be absolutely essential to what you do um, after you spread your proverbial wings and, and leave college and go off and uh, find new jobs either in industry or in government. Um, and obviously, we, we definitely want you to, to, to massively succeed at that process um, and understanding quantitative information um, just opens up a whole world of opportunities to you once you get to that stage. So um, uh, this is a, going to be a really key part of, of your development over the coming years. So why do quantitative skills matter? Um, well, ultimately, the World Economic Forum has identified in their new vision for, vision for education that in the 21st century, there are essentially about 16 different key competencies. Um, and uh, it's really exciting that we address many of these key, uh, many of these key uh, skills um, uh, within uh, this particular module. So just as an example, um, obviously we're going to be leaning on numeracy and developing those skills, uh, scientific literacy, science is quantitative, so being able to understand this information is, is, is essential. Uh, ICT literacy, so within this module you'll learn one of the industry standard pieces of statistical software and, and that's highly valuable. Um, and then also importantly, um, critical thinking. So this is gonna be a key thing which I keep coming back to within this module. Um, I want you to be able to cr think critically about statistical information um, and, and that uh, provides you with uh, a skill set which you can transfer th throughout your life no matter how the economy or society changes and job roles change. Um, and then finally I just want to point to the, 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 the column over here on character qualities, many of which you will be developing currently, uh, not least adaptability given the circumstances in which we find ourselves in. Um, so, so thank you for um, uh, your efforts in this area to adapt to the circumstances. I also just want to emphasize uh, point 13, skill 13, persistence, um, because that's really important uh, within, within this field. Um, you know, if I look at my own personal development, um, it, it's, it's definitely far better to try something and get it wrong and work out how you got it wrong um, than to, 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 to not start early, essentially, or to, to, to avoid uh, having a go. So, so this is something which I will really emphasize throughout this term that I want you to have a go early um, and engage with the material. Um, do work with others as long as you, you turn in your own work um, and, and be persistent with the material. I appreciate uh, it might be uh, challenging um, at some parts, um, but it's incredibly rewarding. And I think that this really will be one of the most rewarding modules which you do while you're at GMU. So what's the aim? So what's the two minute elevator pitch? And essentially that, that I would like you at the end of the module to be able to think critically about quantitative information. And that's because this type of information is all around us. Um, so we engage with it on a daily basis in the media, try and read a newspaper <laughs> or watch the news. Um, statistical information uh, is always um, being quoted, used in that context. And I need you to be able to think about um, not just how it was produced, but also what the motivations might be behind the people who design and then use uh, some of that statistical information. And then I think the other thing to mention is that, you know, we're all engaging with uh, quantitative information through all of the internet connected digital devices that we use on an hourly basis. So um, think about your smartphone, um, a computer or a laptop, um, increasingly um, the use of a smart watch or home uh, internet connected smart devices. Most of these are displaying dashboards of data. So if you just take a smart watch, for example, that may be displaying uh, your heart rate and it will give you um, a, a, an average over, over a time based on your movements around some spatial environment. And it will give you some understanding about the minimum, the maximum of that heart rate. And, and it's really useful to be able to, to understand and interpret and think critically about this information. Um, okay. Um, 
So why quantitative information? Well, ultimately, it's, it's far easier to change the world and make it a better place by using quantitative methods. Um, so th that can be data-driven discovery. So um, we may think that the world works in a particular way and quantitative tools enable us to, to test whether that has an element of truth or not, to see whether there's indicative evidence as to whether um, the, the world doesn't in fact work in, in that particular way. Um, and then I think importantly, I just want to emphasize that data uh, underpins pretty much how all decisions are made these days. Um, so if you think in industry or in government, uh, billions of dollars worth of investment is being um, uh, driven by uh, data to solve all of the economic, social, environmental problems which, which we need to address in the coming months through COVID, um, getting the economy back on track, but also over the longer term. So how do we decarbonize uh, the global energy system, for example? How do we solve some of the social problems that we have in society? Um, and data is really at the center of that. So, so you, it's really incredibly valuable to, to have the skill set that I will be teaching throughout this term. So what are the objectives for the actual class? Well, I would like you to, by the end, be able to conduct rigorous statistical analysis. I mean, this is going to be central to understanding and undertaking spatial science. Um, a key part of this is, is using that industry standard statistical software. Um, I would like you to be able to understand statistical analysis um, because this is just pervasive across the sciences and the spatial sciences. Um, and then importantly, um, what I would like you to be able to do is to think critically about the use and also the misuse of statistics. Uh, and we will get into this within this module. Um, and this is all part of how you assess statistical information, whether you think, um, uh, you know, based on being presented with some evidence, um, that that statistical evidence actually represents truth. Um, and, 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 and that's an incredibly valuable uh, thing to be able to understand. So there is a required text, um, and that text is um, by McGrew. Um, it's an introduction to statistical problem solving and geography. And I just want to emphasize that it's the third edition that we'll be teaching from. So it's really important that you, you do get that uh, text. I think it's available uh, in hardcover, softcover, but also as an ebook. Um, uh, so uh, please do go and, and, and procure that particular um, text. Uh, and then I think I just want to emphasize my commitment to you, and that's that really this module has been designed to ensure that uh, uh, whatever your race, socioeconomic background, gender, orientation or disability, uh, I really do hope that the material is accessible to you and that you feel uh, included in the learning experience. Um, and, you know, if there are any issues that you would like to raise with me regarding any of these, uh, any of the course content, for example, then please do reach out. I would love to hear from you. Um, there are a few um, delays to getting the content out, uh, mainly as a result of, of, of COVID. And um, so unfortunately, I, I am still in the UK right now um, because I've been unable to move to the States. Um, that's also caused a few little delays with how we get me set up um, to, to actually teach the module. But essentially, we'll be ironing these out over the next couple of days and the syllabus and the course content should be appearing on Blackboard uh, very shortly. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to basically introduce myself and let you know exactly what we'll be doing this term. Um, and just to let you know that, you know, this is going to be a, an exciting module, uh, which I, I hope uh, will be taught to you in a stimulating way. So just to finish then, I just thought I'd leave you with a motivational quote. And, and that's this one by Einstein. Uh, he stated essentially genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work. Uh, and, you know, I love this quote because uh, you don't have to be 100% genius. <laughs> you only need a small fraction. The rest of it is, is just through, uh, you know, engaging with the material uh, and, uh, and having a go. Um, and these are traits which I will emphasize throughout this module. So I think it's a poignant way just to finish this introductory video. Great. Well, um, it's nice to, to meet you all virtually, and uh, I'll look forward to engaging with you as the, as the term moves on. Thank you.